Welcome to another edition of Daily Charge with Mountaintop Life Daily Devotional, the program that is specially packaged to bring you into closer fellowship with God through His Word and prayer. Wonderful people of God, we've always encouraged you to imitate champions in the kingdom of God. As we told you in the past, Champions in God's kingdom have the habit of keeping a daily appointment with God in quiet time or daily devotion on a regular basis. This enables them to constantly receive fresh grace and anointing that enables them to rule their world. I encourage you strongly to imitate champions in God's kingdom by consistently observing your daily devotion on a regular basis. Every time you have an encounter with God in the morning before you engage in activities of the day, His anointing and His grace will be heavy upon your life and your success for that day will be phenomenal. I pray that today you will encounter the God of all possibilities and you will rule your world in the name of Jesus Christ. Wonderful people of God, today is Sunday, the 18th of February, 2024. And our topic for today is enemies of the family. And in this instance, we are looking at laziness. Laziness as an enemy of the family. Before we go into the discourse proper, let us pray. Father in heaven, we thank you because you are good to us and your mercy endures forever. We thank you, Almighty God, because you make your grace available for us on a daily basis. Thank you because your grace is sufficient for us. Thank you, Almighty God, for the opportunity to gather at your feet to learn this morning. Father, let the power of your word turn our lives around for good in the name of Jesus Christ. Today, break the gates of brass and cut the bars of iron in sunder in the mighty name of Jesus Christ and release the blessings of heaven upon every one of us, and let the glory be yours in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father, for in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Once again, our topic is enemies of the family, and we are looking at laziness. The family is the smallest social unit. God who established the marriage institution also established the family institution. And we all know that our God is a God of purpose. He has his own purposes for establishing the marriage institution. The same God has certain purposes that he expects the family institution to perform or accomplish. The family is supposed to be a team and each member of that team called family is supposed to play certain roles for the fulfillment of the purpose or the purposes of the family. The purpose of the family is to provide physical, emotional, social, economic and spiritual needs of its members so that those members can become productive and useful for God and His work on earth. When a family is run, when a family is run in line with God's word, that family will be healthy and functional. Conversely, if a family is run contrary to God's word, that family will be dysfunctional. I need to mention the fact that a family is supposed to be a huge blessing to its members. 
But when such, when a family does not yield the positive results and the blessings it should to its members, then there is a problem. There are certain agents or agencies that are called enemies of the family. These are agents or agencies that hinder a particular family from being a blessing to its members. A family has certain purposes it is supposed to achieve. A family has certain blessings it is supposed to yield to its members. When that family fails in yielding those benefits or in fulfilling those purposes, positive, glorious purposes in the life of its members, then some enemies are at work. When those enemies are at work, the family will be hindered from yielding its positive results or producing its positive benefits. What are those enemies of the family? And what do we need to do about them? The enemies of a Christian family include the devil, sin, pride, greed, envy, hatred, selfishness, laziness, and so on and so forth. Today, we are focusing on laziness as one of the enemies of the family. When laziness reigns supreme in the family, it can run that family aground. When laziness reigns, laziness reigns in the family, that family will not flourish. When laziness reigns in the family, the family will wallow in poverty, in penury, and in shame. The eagle of such a family will never fly. The star of such a family will never shine because it has been crippled by the evil spirit called laziness. The enemy attacks families and so evil seeds in them. One of those evil seeds and one of those terrible arrows the enemy fires at families is the arrow of laziness. The evil seed of laziness. We must not allow that seed to germinate in our family. It must not, it must not grow into a big tree that will begin to, to produce fruits. Otherwise, the family will go into oblivion and will never fulfill its purpose for God. We must take deliberate step and action to kick laziness out of our families. And the Lord will help us in doing so in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Our memory verse for today is Proverbs chapter 13, verse 4. It reads, The soul of the sluggard desireth and hath nothing. Who is the sluggard? The sluggard is the lazy person. The sluggard is the person that is unwilling to work. There are people that are looking for jobs to do work to do, but have not found one. Those are not lazy people because they have that genuine intention to work. It is only that unemployment or lack of work has positioned them to be idle. They are not really lazy. Lazy people are people that have work to do, but refuse to do the work. Lazy people are people that prefer to be idle. They will give you a thousand and one excuses as to why the work should not be done. Our memory verse once again is Proverbs 13 verse 4. It says the, the soul of the sluggard, the sluggard is the lazy and the drone. The, of the, the soul of the sluggard desireth. The sluggard wants all the good things that hardworking people also desire. They want good houses, good cars. They want good bank accounts. Money, good money in their bank accounts. They desire all these things, but they end up having nothing. But the soul of the diligent shall be made fat. My prayer for you today is that you will be diligent and your soul will be made fat in the name of Jesus Christ. Wonderful people of God, 
daily charge with Mountain Top Life daily devotional continues immediately after this timeout. Don't go away. Through your handheld gadgets, you can now have access to your daily devotional, The Mountain Top Life for the year 2024, Volume 9, available through download on the Google Play Store and the iOS App Store. Download yours today. Mountain Top Life Daily Devotional, Volume 9, a life-changing encounter with a God that answered by fire. Mountain of Fire and Miracles Ministries, surely the Lord is here. The Mountain Top Life Daily Devotional for 2024 is now available. Volume 9. Get a copy today and some for those you care about and leave your days filled with the presence of the Lord. The Mountain Top Life Daily Devotional. Volume 9. Life Changing Encounter with a God that Answered by Fire. Get a copy, visit www.mfmebooks.com or any MFM bookshop near you. Mountain of Fire and Miracles Ministries, surely the Lord is here. Welcome back. We are still looking at the topic the enemies of the family, and we are focusing today on laziness. Beloved of, the, beloved of the Lord, laziness is a sin because God, our Father and our Creator, is diligent. Imagine God creating the entire universe and all the things in them in six days and rested only on the seventh. Look at the quantum of what God did in six days. This is something no human being can do in millions of years. God is diligent and we should be diligent also. Jesus Christ, our royal master and our, our role model is also diligent. He said, my father walketh hitherto and I work. Jesus is diligent, he is diligent, and we should be hardworking too. As Christians, we should be diligent, we should not be lazy. We should be imitators of Christ. If Christ was diligent, we should be diligent. Any believer that is lazy is not an imitator of Christ. The Bible tells us, that even in the early church, great Bible characters like Apostle Paul exemplified diligence and taught the disciples, the followers of Christ that were with him. He taught them the importance of being diligent, being hardworking. In the early church, the Bible tells us that some members of the Thessalo Thessalonica congregation stopped working. Why? They felt they shouldn't continue to work. They should stop any work they were doing and be idle because as far as they were concerned, at that time, Jesus was going to come soon. But Apostle Paul corrected them. He told them to go back to work. He told them, he commanded them to work with their own hands. And you find that in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 11. Similarly, in, in 2 Thessalonians, chapter 3, from verse 6 to 12, Apostle Paul told the congregation, he made himself an example to the people. He told them that he was working with his hands and supplying his own needs, make, making his own provisions available for himself. For that reason, he told those who were idle among them not to be idle, but that they should work and provide bread and water for themselves. Apostle Paul did not only preach it, he, he exemplified it. And when Apostle Paul later wrote to Timothy, in 1 Timothy chapter 5, verse 8, Apostle Paul began to tell Timothy that 
every responsible man should provide for his household. Every responsible man should provide for his household. If a man fails to provide for his household, he has denied the faith and is worse than an infidel. An infidel is an unbeliever. Being idle, being lazy, are not characteristics that are to be found in the life of any true Christian. Failing to provide for your family, making people that are supposed to be dependent on you to suffer lack and want and all kinds of pain is not a feature that should be found in a Christian. It's something that should be found in unbelievers. If you fail to provide for your household, all their basic needs, food, shelter, clothing, and all of that, and other things like that, if you fail to provide them for your members of your household, you have denied faith. You have disappointed heaven. You have failed the master, and you are worse than an unbeliever. People that fail to provide for their household are people that are lazy. There is work to do, they don't care, they don't do it. They prefer to waste their time and to remain idle doing nothing. And the Bible tells us in our memory verse for today that a person that is lazy, the soul of the slogan, though with desire, but we have nothing. A lazy person will have nothing. A lazy person is like a farmer who's, who's nothing during the planting season. When it is time to harvest, the person will go back home empty-handed and will be full of sorrow. I pray that the Lord will cast the spirit of laziness and idleness out of our lives in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Quickly, I will mention some characteristics of a lazy person. Number one, a lazy person can't get started in the morning. For you to get started in the morning, early and prompt, you must be a diligent person, serious-minded, responsible person who understands the management of time and who has goals to meet and to achieve. A lazy person does not have all of this. A lazy person finds it difficult to get out of the bed. A lazy person oversleeps. A lazy person oversleeps and finds it difficult to get out of the bed and eat the ground running and go and accomplish the work for the day. The Bible says to every labor there is profit. But how will a lazy person who does not do anything get profit? How will a lazy person get reward? So, the first characteristic of a lazy person is that he or she finds it difficult to get started in the morning. The lazy person sleeps and oversleeps and will not leave the comfort zone. Number two, the, the lazy person seldom finishes anything, any task he or she is given. A lazy person seldom finishes any task he or she is given. When you give a task to a lazy person, it is either done badly or it is not completed. It is either done poorly, slipshodly, or not completed. This is another characteristic of a lazy person. Number three, a lazy person is always full of excuses. A lazy person will say, it is too sunny outside. It is raining outside. There is a lion in the street. A lazy person can give you a thousand and one reason as to why he or she will not get the job done or could not get the job done. A lazy person is a poor performer, a poor team player. If you have a lazy person in your team, then you should be ready to do some extra work. Number four, a lazy person is often pessimistic. A lazy person lacks optimism. 
A lazy person lacks enthusiasm. A lazy person lacks personal drive and motivation, but is always full of pessimism, dampened spirit, and highly discouraged. And this can also be, uh, be made to infect other people if care is not taken. Another characteristic of a lazy person is that a lazy person is full of unrealistic dreams. Unrealistic dreams. A lazy, a lazy person does a lot of talking, no action, no achievements. I pray that the spirit of laziness will not come upon any of us in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Wonderful people of God, we are called to be imitators of Christ. Christ was diligent in his earthly ministry and life. He was diligent. You should be diligent. A diligent member of a family is an asset to that family, while an idle member of a family is a liability. I pray that the grace to be diligent will be given to every one of us in our families and will be assets in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We'll go for a short break now, and when we return, we'll continue our discussion on the enemies of the family, focusing specifically on laziness. Don't go away. Through your handheld gadgets, you can now have access to your daily devotional, The Mountain Top Live, for the year 2024, Volume 9, available through download on the Google Play Store and the iOS App Store. Download yours today. Mountain Top Live Daily Devotional, Volume 9, a life-changing encounter with a God that answered by fire. Mountain of Fire and Miracles Ministries, surely the Lord is here. The Mountain Top Life Daily Devotional for 2024 is now available. Volume 9. Get a copy today and some for those you care about and leave your days filled with the presence of the Lord. The Mountain Top Life Daily Devotional, Volume 9. Life changing encounter with a God that answered by fire. Get a copy, visit www.mfmebooks.com or any MFM bookshop near you. Mountain of Fire and Miracles Ministries, surely the Lord is here. Welcome back. Wonderful people of God. As I mentioned earlier on, a family is a unit, a team, comprising a number of people. The father, the mother, the children. And what that means is that when we, we say laziness is an enemy to the family, what it means is that it is not only the father in the family that laziness can affect and as a result put the family in jeopardy, Every member of the family should be diligent. Laziness should not be found in the life of the head of the family, the father, in the life of the, of the wife, that's the mother, and then in the life of the children. Laziness should not be found in the family at all. Every member of the family is a potential contributor to the welfare, the well-being, and the good of the family. Therefore, in a family, apart from the father, who is the main provider, other members like the mother and the adult children can also provide for the family. And how will they succeed in providing for the family? They will only succeed in providing for the family if they are diligent. If they are diligent. And that is why every member of the family should be diligent. Every member of the family should be diligent. Laziness brings poverty and want. 
But we find that in Proverbs chapter 6 from verse 9 to 11. The Bible says that a slack hand causes poverty, but the hand of the diligent makes rich, according to Proverbs 10 verse 4. Wonderful people of God, when there is laziness in the family, that family will be subjected to hardship and pain. And that is why I pray for every breadwinner in every family, that the heavens over your life and your finances will open. And the Lord God will strengthen your hands. Your hands will not be slack. And the Lord will bless you so that you provide for your family in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. When there is laziness in the family, there will be a lot of hardship and pain. Number one, in the physical, laziness will bring poverty, hunger, and lack. As a result of this, members of that family will, will lack food, clothing, and shelter, the basic necessities of life, and several other things that will make life worthwhile for them. When there is laziness in the family, I've talked about physical laziness and its consequences. When there is laziness in the family, we can also have spiritual laziness in the family. And when we have this, you will find situations where there is no family altar, no praying time, no family prayer time, no Bible study time or devotion time for the family, poor church attendance among its members, and no priest in the home or the family. All these are signs of spiritual laziness in the family. There will also be lack of love, lack of care, attention, and empathy. It's a terrible thing for a family to be undergoing laziness, physical laziness, spiritual laziness, and all kinds of laziness. That family will suffer untold hardship. I pray that will not be your portion in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord God of heaven will make every member of your family to be diligent. And by being diligent, God will also make, make them to be fat in the name of Jesus Christ. The Bible says that the righteous shall flourish like the palm tree. Every member of your family shall be diligent and they shall flourish in the name of Jesus Christ. Let us pray. Our Father and our God, we thank you once again. Thank you because you are good to us and your mercy endures forever. Thank you for the telecast of this morning and your word that has gone forth to your children. Thank you for making our grace to abound towards us. Thank you, Father, for making us to have sufficiency in all things and to abound unto good works. Accept our thanks in Jesus' name. Father, I pray for all your children. I bind the spirit of laziness, the spirit of idleness, and I cast them out of the lives of your children in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray, Lord, that you will release upon every one of us the spirit of diligence, the spirit of diligence, and you will make us, Lord, to be blessings to our families, assets to our families and even your kingdom and not liabilities in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father, because you have answered. To you be all the glory and the honor, now and forever in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, for in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. God bless you and see you again. God bless you in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We thank God for the miracle of sleeping and waking up. I decree that today it shall be well with you in the name of Jesus. The Lord God that dwelleth in Zion will move you forward in a new way in the mighty name of Jesus. No evil shall befall you this day, neither shall any plague move near your camp. Wherever you go, the favor of the Almighty shall be upon you. Your life shall be plugged into the socket of divine favor, divine restoration, in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. All the evil present in this day, I bind them and I cast them out. You shall not be part of the evil that is spreading around in the name of Jesus. The Lord will make you head and never detail in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. 
I soak the whole of this day in the blood of Jesus. I soak the whole of this day in the blood of Jesus. You are going in your coming out shall be blessings. The hand of God shall be mighty upon you. I cover you and your family with the blood of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Have a wonderful day, beloved. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. Amen.